Everyday carry is something that matters quite a bit to me. If I'm going to carry something all the time, it really needs to earn its keep. So I carry my stainless steel bolt action pin. This isn't the one I made in the video, but it's one very similar to it. I have an original Leatherman PST, a Swiss Army knife that I use mostly for the tweezers, a Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 21, car key, phone. But there's one thing that I've been carrying for about the past three years that I find way more useful than all of this stuff combined. Well, except for the phone. It's just a standard little six inch precision rule. But this is unbelievably useful. When I'm here in the shop, I think I pull this thing out of my pocket probably every 10 minutes or less. Even outside of the shop, it's really handy when I go to the hardware store. I find myself using it in the hardware store all the time. Of course, the problem with something like this is how do you carry it? Because it has sharp corners and it needs those to be useful, but those sharp corners are gonna poke through your pockets. Plus, if you just stuff this in your pocket, it's gonna get bent. The corners will get dull. You can't just put this in your pocket. So I had to make a sheath for it. The one that I just showed you has actually been around for about a year already. I've been carrying it. It's working great so far. These are my six previous attempts. So I want to just go through these real quick and show you what I learned from them and that'll tell you why I landed on this design. And then in this video, I'm going to build a new one, making a couple of slight improvements on this one. So this first one did not have a clip, but the main problem with this one, it became loose after a while. I originally made the slot just thin enough that the rule was tight. After a bit of time, it became loose. Then with this one, I got the idea to put a curve in it and it totally failed because it's too tight. Then this was the second attempt at the curve and this one I actually carried for a long time. It looks straight, but it's actually got a curved slot inside. I cut this one with the CNC router and I cut one piece for the convex and one with the concave so they just fit together. And this worked great because with the curve in there, it can't fall out. It's just bending the rule slightly. So even if it wears the slot out over time, it's still tight. Then I got the idea to put a clip on it. As you can see, this is the first one where I had just one notch on one side. And this worked. I was able to put my finger in there and pull it out. I didn't need to be able to pinch it like I could on these. But this one was bulky and also it had a curve just one way and I found it to be uncomfortable in my pocket. Plus, I always hated how this clip looked. So I made this one. This was also kind of a total fail right to begin with. It has way too much curve, and also the clip was just not good enough. But I do like the proportions of this clip a little bit better. My sixth attempt. I carried this one for a long time. It has an S curve. That makes it a lot more comfortable in the pocket than just a curve like this. And the S curve still holds the rule very well. I also put a larger clip on here, and this time I used titanium for the clip, which is the same material that the clip on this pocket knife is made out of, and I love it. Really, this one worked great. But I found an issue with it after some time. After carrying it for quite a while, I noticed that the rule was slowly climbing its way out. I mean, over months, it was not going in as deep. I finally realized that's because debris is getting in the slot, getting jammed to the bottom, and there's no way to clean it out. That's why I made the seventh version that I've been carrying for about the past year. And it has a slot at the bottom, so I can actually push the ruler through that slot and push any kind of debris out. I also made this one quite a bit thinner and lighter and it's held up just fine. So now you're probably wondering, isn't it uncomfortable to have six inches of wood in your pants? I have not found it to be a problem at all. Like I still have my full range of motion and everything. It's not in the way but I do have one pair of jeans that have too shallow a pocket for it. It's kind of running into the curve at the bottom of the pocket. So you're probably going to want to cut a scrap wood piece and see if something that long fits in your pocket well. Just to give you some perspective on size, this is the little iPhone, just the standard iPhone. That's how much bigger it is. Most people carry a phone this size, so something this size will probably also fit in your pocket. But also, Starrett does happen to make this same style of rule in a four inch length. I think it's really something you just have to try for yourself because it's going to be different for every person and different for every pocket.
I'm being pretty selective on the material I use for this because if it's something I'm going to carry for the next several years, I want it to look good. I sanded this down to an eighth inch thick and then cut it to one inch widths. The sheath is made up of three layers of wood, which are kind of hard to see. I'm going to make this one the front, this one will be in the middle, and this one will be the back. So this one that has the least figure will be the one you don't see. And these each need to have these cutouts in them. The cutout in this one is for the rule. This one is to fit into that cutout and kind of make them fit together. And this one is for the clip. I'm slowly moving the fence over and cutting off just a tiny bit each time until this is exactly a half inch wide. Here you can see how it's just a tiny bit wider than the rule. As per the drawing, we also need to wrap it this end. So that's this middle layer all done. Now we need to make the front layer, which will have the actual slot in it for the rule. Before I get started cutting that slot, I want to cut the notch out of the top for your finger to pull the rule out. So I actually screwed this one up and I'm gonna have to start over. You can see I have a little bit of side to side movement, so I made the slot in this one too wide. And of course the result of that is the rule is too loose. The next thing we need to do is to cut the clean out slot across the bottom. On this one, obviously I made that slot big enough that the rule fits right through it but I've never really liked the way that looks. And it turns out you don't actually need to push anything through there to clean it out. Just having a hole there allows all the debris to exit. So on the new one, instead of having this wide slot, I'm basically just gonna have a pinhole. If I ever need to, I'll still be able to blow air through that or use a little piece of wire to clean it out. But in my experience, it's not gonna be necessary. I just switched this out to an eighth inch bit. The slot is going to be at 3 16 of an inch from the end of the rule sheet. The bit is set to the same height as the quarter inch bit was to cut this slot. I'll use this 90 degree block to push it through nice and straight. So this is the front layer, this is the middle layer. When I put them together like this, you can see the bottom of this rabbit lines up with the top side of this slot. So when I put them like this, you have a nice clean 1 16th by 1 8 inch hole all the way through. Now you're probably wondering why I bother to make them interlock like this. Why not just cut the groove in one side and glue it against a flat piece? This is something I've learned through making all of these prototypes. If you just glue the one piece with a channel flat onto another piece, you're gonna get a little bubble of squeeze out on this inside corner. When you try to slide the rule in, it tends to hang up on that squeeze out. So instead, I make them fit like this, and this way that squeeze out pretty much ends here and here. So now it's time to move on to making the clip, which I'm gonna make out of this 6AL4V titanium sheet. This is 35 thousandths thick. I bought it on eBay for just a few dollars, so let's go make that now. While the belt grinder is arguably the best tool for this job, I've made all of my previous clips with just a file. You probably noticed that on the diagram here on the back, it has this pocket with these notches in the side. Now, the purpose of that is for the clip to inset into that pocket, and the sides of the clip will be notched so it actually interlocks with the wood and gives it some mechanical strength to be sure the clip can't get pulled out. So now we need to bend this clip into this shape. And to do that, I'm gonna make a little jig.
So the first bend I want to make is going to be this little one right here. It makes the clip kind of straighten out after the spot where it pinches your pocket. So I've got the end profile, now I just need to bend it about here to make the loop. This is as far as I can go using the jig, because at this point I can fully close this gap and it just springs back open to the same point. So from here on, in order to close this, we have to pinch the bend over here. It's important not to try to bend this around too small of pin. Quarter inch may have already been too small, I'm not sure. When you go to pinch this, it can crack. I've had it happen before. So if that happens, I'll just have to do this again using a 5 16 bolt as the pin to bend it around initially. I'm using a vise with wooden jaws to do this so I don't mar the surface. Nope. It cracked. I'm trying to get as tight a bend as I can because otherwise it's just bulky, but I pushed that a little too far. I just made a second one of these and I modified the jig to take a 5 16 bolt. In order to draw this cut out onto the back layer, I've just marked where it needs to be, and then I can just put the clip on here, make sure it's centered, check the other side to be sure it's straight, and then just trace around that. Now I can cut that out with a router, and I know I'll have an exact fit with this. And just like that, it's all ready to glue together. Of course, this is also the step where I give it its S-curve shape. When you glue all three layers and force them into an S-curve as the glue dries, then it will retain that S-curve. So in order to make the S-curve initially, I took a two by four and cut an S-curve into it. I've actually used this jig already on several of them. There's also a slot cut into this one that just gives clearance for the clip. So I just need to put all of the pieces in here and clamp this together and that will clamp the S-curve into the sheath. The thing is, you can't really just put it in there and clamp it or it will have some gap. So I use this foam. It's just slightly squishy foam. You could use any kind of dense foam or soft rubber and that will take up all the gaps. This should give you an idea how squishy it is. Another thing I should point out is that it does matter which way the curve goes. I mentioned earlier that this one is curved way too much. It's also curved the wrong way and I pretty quickly realized that wasn't gonna work. So why does it matter? So I have the rule in this sheath. Now watch my posture as I remove it from my pocket. And as I put it back. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the one that's curved the wrong way. All right, remove it. So it really didn't wanna come out of there and it was bent a lot as I was pulling it out of my pocket, but it kind of worked. But now let's try to put it back. So the problem is, as this one is coming up out of the sheath, it's aimed into my side. And then when you're trying to put it back, you can't really aim it like that, and it's missing the slot. So you have to lean way over in order to get enough angle. With this one, it's curved the other way. So if anything, it's trying to come out away from your side. You can put it in by just putting it straight down. So again, this is correct with it having a convex on the side opposite the clip and a concave at the bottom. This is wrong. The clip is also just glued in with standard wood glue. The glue is mostly there to fill the gap and not so much to hold it. You want to be fairly conservative on the amount of glue that you put on these edges, even though they do interlock to prevent squeeze out. If you use too much glue, you will probably still end up with squeeze out. And once I get these all lined up, I'm going to put some tape on them so they don't slide around when I clamp it. And this green foam stuff just goes on one side. That way the other side is a more absolute form. Oh. I just used Tight Bond 2 for this, 
And I think on the bottle it says you can unclamp it after half an hour, but don't. If you unclamp it that soon, it will lose its S-curve because these plies are under so much tension, they'll sort of straighten out. You want to leave it overnight at least. All right, let's see what we got. Well, this is embarrassing. I completely screwed it up. So I'm gonna have to start over, remake the whole thing. I'm gonna just shut off the camera and remake all of the parts and I'll come back to gluing it up. But lucky for you, you can learn from my mistakes. So I'll show you what I did wrong. So first of all, you can see that the clip is not centered on the slot. And that's because this back layer shifted. This is something that should have been pretty easy to avoid if I had just looked at it. The other thing that happened is I put the foam on the wrong side. So I put the foam on this side, it should have gone on this side. The foam is there to evenly apply pressure everywhere. If you put it on the front, well, this wood is so thin on top of the slot here, it squashed the slot closed. And the result is the rule doesn't fit. So you need to put the foam on the back side and have the rigid form on the front side because a rigid form can't squash that slot closed. I remade the four pieces, so let's try gluing that again. I'm also using higher quality tape this time. That other tape left some residue. And I'm just using one layer of the green foam this time. I think that should be enough. And I'm putting it under the clip. Here I'm checking to be sure those layers are still lined up to make sure the clip will end up centered on the slot. And that should be good. In almost 24 hours, let's see what we have this time. Well, the clip looks centered anyway. The bottom layer did shift off center at the bottom, but that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna run this through the table saw to get rid of that uneven layer. That cleaned up the sides nice and straight. I almost forgot to check and see if the rule fits. It's a little tighter than I would like, but I think it feels like there's some glue squeeze out in there. That's probably the culprit. And I think that will work its way out. And yeah, that's looser already, so good. So I got this all sanded up nice and smooth. Now I need to apply some finish. On my previous one, I used this butcher block conditioner. I like to use an oil finish, but I don't think this is ideal. So on this one, I'm gonna use this salad bowl finish. This is edible. I don't really plan to eat this thing, but you know, it doesn't hurt to go with food grade just in case. And here's how I got the finish under the clip. So I think that's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and a special thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Bye.